everyone and welcome to episode 9 of the Wrestling Madness Podcast. I am your host Anthony Walker, as you well know, especially if you see this on YouTube with the intro. And today's show we're going to talk about the main points of Raw, Smackdown and TNA, as we always do. A few other things as well, what to look out in Ring of Honor, especially on June 22nd. A bit of TNA information as well. A few little rumours that I've heard here and there as well, uh, that I'd like to discuss and give my opinions on. And other good stuff as well. And also, I will be mentioning what uh, guests that I'll be bringing onto the show. That's right, I am working on guests, on bringing guests onto the Wrestling Madness podcast. But that will be done in due time. Now, I want to kick off this show, this episode, because I feel a need to do a pipe bomb. So, I'll play my intro. In anybody else's hands, this is a microphone. In my hands, it's a pipe bomb. Right, to the low point of Monday Night Raw, which is m- my following pipe bomb, guys. It involved Emma versus Alicia Fox. Now, not the London episode of Raw the week before. WWE puts Emma, and uh, Alicia Fox rather, and Paige in the same ring. And Alicia Fox loses a match to Paige. And then Alicia goes on this meltdown process kind of thing. And then the following week in London, in Paige's home country, in front of her, you know, her fans, WWE has Paige lose to Alicia Fox. Now, that loss meant that at payback, Alicia Fox will get a title shot against Paige. And then this past week on Raw, Alicia does the job, the number one contender to the Divas title, she does the job, a job to Emma, the Pied Piper of Flowing Bubbles. And eh, with that stupid dance, that marching dance, whatever. WWE, what you doing, okay? Again, this is booking. And I've said it until I'm blue in the face. I don't understand WWE booking. You've got the number one contender for the Divas Championship on Raw, jobbing to someone who spends time hanging around Santino Morella. Alicia Fox is the number one contender and she loses. What the hell, okay? And I've already made my clear, f- fingers clear about Paige losing in her home country. I mean, for Pete's sake, WWE, what the hell, you know? What should have happened was Alicia Fox should have won the first match with them and then she wouldn't have had to have done that meltdown, you know? She would have, you know, have her win that match, then announce her as the number one contender for the Divas title. In London, have Paige get some sort of revenge against her, like a, a win against her, you know? Class that as a Paige, as Paige's little revenge for what happened the previous week. The main low point was this past week. How are you going to have the number one contender to the Divas Championship lose? And, it's, and, and you know what? Emma's not the problem. It's the fact that she lost. I mean, what happened to momentum going into yesterday's, last night's uh, payback pay-per-view, you know? What happened to that? You know, what happened to momentum, you know? Making people think that, oh, wait a minute, Alicia Fox might be on something here. She might be in the next Divas champ. She might have a chance. She's been dominating since she won, since she beat uh, Paige in England. She might stand a chance. You know, give Paige a little bit of competition. But no, you had to kill it. You had to kill it by making Emma put an Emmel over on Alicia Fox. Seriously, if common sense was used more in this world, this world would be a smarter place. And it seemed it doesn't apply to WWE booking and the bookers that book this. And I had watched WWE, I've watched wrestling all my life. And sometimes nowadays, I wonder to myself, God, I wish I was booking wrestling. Because somewhere in this big head, yes, I have a big head, ladies and gentlemen. I used to get called big head a lot at school. Somewhere in this head, I have a brain. And somewhere in this brain, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, I have a thing called common sense, you know, things that make sense. Common sense is meaningful that things that make sense, I I would imagine, or doing what is what makes sense and not making sense, like having Alicia job to Emma. The pipe, the pipe piper of flowing bubbles, and you basically killed whatever momentum Alicia had because people are now going to think, ah, oh, it's going to be an easy win now. You know, it's going to be an easy win now for Paige Sunday at, at, at this past yesterday at um, which it probably will. You know, Alicia's going to be winning now. That's what you made her think. I'll get to payback results later on. You know, I'll get to payback results on the nature of the date later on on the nature of the date. But for Pete's sake, you know, it it makes no sense why WWE have to go down a stupid route, so to speak. I mean, I bet I bet you. People will playing war with Paige losing in England, in her home country, for crying out loud. I mean, no wonder the NXT Championship gets more publicity than friggin' the Divas title. And you know no one cares about the Divas Championship when the thing hasn't been defended at a WrestleMania, and WrestleMania was the first time, WrestleMania 30 was the first time the Divas title was ever defended. WWE, I'm begging you, smarten this Divas division up, and quick, and book these Divas right. Or, take all the Divas, throw them on NXT, and scrap the Divas division, because you'd be best off. I mean, that's what's going to happen to Alicia Fox. Now, She's going to go to payback. She's probably going to go to payback pay-per-view. Again, I'll do the results later on in the week. She's probably going to go to payback, lose, and then you're just going to take her and dump her back on NXT again. You know, at least you'd be, you'd be best off staying there anyway because you're not going to get any break. And if you win, and, and if you did win, which and if you do win or did win, 
the more power to you, but it ain't gonna happen, love. And you wait, and no one's gonna get that break. Because you know what's gonna happen? AJ Lee's gonna come back, you know? Paige is gonna get used as, you know, the puppet to hold the belt until AJ Lee comes back. When AJ Lee decides to return, they're gonna put the belt back on her again, and it's gonna be back to square one. That's what it's gonna be. WWE, for the love of God, sort your booking out regarding the Divas division. Book it properly. Book the Divas properly. If not, scrap it. Scrap the Divas division. Won't be the first time you've scrapped a division. You scrapped the Cruiserweight division before, didn't you? <sighs> anyway, that was the low point of Raw. Now it's time to call talk about the main points of Raw. Raw main points we kicked off as the era of Brad Maddox is over. The Maddox era is over. Cut in its prime and cast into general manager infamy thanks to a swift hand of the authority. Not to mention a final exclamation point provided by a former member of the corporate cable with Daniel Bryan yet to surrender the world heavyweight titles and the shield pains in the butt growing on them every day. Day by day that is. Triple H and Stephanie McMahon decided to make a statement by handing the Raw General Manager Brad Maddox his pink slips for allowing the Hounds of Justice to name themselves guest commentators on last week's show. Before the authority could pass the sentence on Maddox, however, the one-time Director of Operations, Kane, provided the final world word provided the final word on Maddox front office tenure and Stephanie commanded Kane to teach him a lesson. The demon administrated both a chokeslam. The demon administrated both a chokeslam and a tombstone on Raw's former general manager and then Stephanie McMahon fired him in her dad's words. What's next for Raw? Will the authority just take control or will they go out and hire a new general manager? Gonna have to wait and see on that one. I never liked Maddox anyway to be honest with you. I just thought he was a cockroach. The next point on Raw so out or go one on one with Rob Van Dam again. Now, like I say, I hope these two continue this rivalry, these matches, because this would be a great feud. Be that as it may, when the unstoppable force meets the immovable object, who comes out on top? The number one contenders to the Intercontinental and United States Championships, respectively. Rob Van Dam and Cesaro solve that very quickly on Raw, with bad news buried at ringside on the commentary table. Throughout the contest, the King of Swing used his famous power and counter, famous power to counter Rob Van Dam's time area moves, transferring his forward momentum into a gut wrench suplexes and at one point snatching Mr. Monday Night clean out of the ring and dropping him head first into the barricade. Van Damme got back his mojo in a big way thrust kicking Barrett in the face for well kicks and setting the Swiss Superman up for a five star frog splash but the second interference by Wade Barrett distracted Rob Van Damme long enough for Cesaro to claim a win with a German suplex. However Sheamus was on hand to broke the Heyman guy for what happened last week on Smackdown and Sheamus showed his own and Sheamus sh showed his own brand his own version of sportsmanship it's not just a song according to Bray Wyatt he truly does have the whole world in his hands but it's not enough for the man of a thousand truths to control the destiny of his flock he must also understand his role in it according to him that is to be necessarily evil that will be some sort of a false idol. John Cena and uh, eventually as a judge of sorts for Jerry the King Lawler who Wyatt summoned to the ring to answer for his vocal and unwavering support of the Sea Nation leader. Despite Lawler's reluctance and an attempt to heroism from JBL that ended ironically in a hellacious clothesline from hell from Luke Harper, the Wyatt Hoyle, the Wyatt got Lawler into the ring for an impromptu trial that nearly ended in a disaster before Cena himself along with the Uso stormed to the ring to make the save. Cena's final vow to stop the eater of words left the WWE Universe chomping at the bit but Wyatt's reaction suggested the task may be much easier easier said than done. Last man standing, a payback. Guess we'll have to wait and see, won't we? First things first, yes, Daniel Bryan is still World Heavyweight Champion, and yes, the Champion of Champions paid dearly for his latest show of disauthority towards Stephanie McMahon. Or to be persistent, his wife did. On Raw, Bryan made his faithful proud by resisting the authorities' latest attempts to deny him of his hard-won glory. Yet Stephanie firing mood didn't 
and when Brad Maddox, by a long shot, unwilling to make Brian a loser, so to speak, by stripping him of the title, she, insist she instead delivered an ultimatum. Surrender the title of payback, or Brie, who put, her, who put hands on her Stephanie two weeks earlier, would be fired suddenly. The line between the yes and the no just got that much more profound. Said it once, I'll say it again. Stephanie's a bitch. Bottom line. Sick and tired of the authority trying to get away, you know, trying to make Daniel Bryan take, take, it's, like, it's like a PG version of Austin McMahon. Daniel Bryan versus authority. Hopefully he will not strip or not hand the titles in at payback. Because we have to wait and see. The gold around Sheamus' waist is different, yet the song remains the same when where Alberto Del Rio is concerned. The Celtic Warrior locked horns with the long-time rival in a non-title match on Raw and once again came out with his Irish eyes smiling. Despite some stiff resistance from the US champions, most prevalent enemy in WWE, a dominant stretch by Del Rio seemed to only spur Sheamus into a barbaric way although Del Rio's kicks to the head seemed to have done more damage than he thought. The Irishman suddenly went loopy right as he had Del Rio lined up for a bro kick and the Mexican aristocrat struck with another boot to the cheek that nearly got the job done. Nearly though wasn't enough. As Seamus sprang forth with a last ditch bro kick to finish off his foe, yet the punch drunk Irishman was in no stable in no state to anticipate a sneak attack from Cesaro and Paul Heyman, who administrated a shower of elbows and a neutral to the wounded champion. Conquering the streak was great, true, but come Sunday, Paul Heyman's client Cesaro may conquer the United States champion and become once again the United States heavyweight champion. So we'll have to wait and see at, pay at payback pay-per-view. The Shield men have the combined tenure of evolution, but they've been around long enough to know where contract signings typically lead. So the Hounds of Justice thought they take control of the contract signing before payback by dismantling the signing table and chairs and all and demanding evolution to present themselves. Triple H and Co obliged and once the ink had dried promised to send the trio back to where they came from with a victory of payback. The Shield managed to goad evolution into a brawl but the game came prepared hence why he's called the Cerebral Assassin and produced a hidden sledgehammer to neutralize the Hounds of Justice providing an exclamation point by taking out Roman Reigns with a triple prowl bomb through the announce table. If anything, if anything, the Shield's payback on Sunday will be swift if they're in any condition to deliver it, that is. TNA main point. Impact Wrestling kicked off with Bully Ray coming out to address the Impact Zone to address his obsession with the six people that he placed bullseyes on. Though he didn't just say who they were, he did it in the style Bully Ray. Went over and uncovered six tables revealing the names of people that he has targeted to put through a table with no intentions to sh with no intentions of showing m any mercy his list included Bobby Lashley Kenny King MVP C3PO I mean Ethan Carter the third Rockstar Spud and last but not least yes Dixie Carter after unveiling Bully Ray called out anyone to the ring so he could send them through a table or beat the hell out of them without hesitation MVP came out to address Bully Ray and uh, urged him to rethink his position. Though he didn't forget his backup, Bobby Lashley and Kenny King came out with MVP also. However, not to miss the opportunity to completely take out Bully Ray, C-3PO and Rockstar Spud was right there to beat down, to put a beat down on Bully Ray. Though it did not seem that they were working with MVP's team, but on their own. Right as N3, right as, right as EC3 was about to put Bully Ray through a table, the world champion himself, Eric Young, came to the rescue along with Austin Aries and the Wolves. After MVP and company was chased from the ring, it seemed Rockstar Spud was still in the ring hiding under the table. Before MVP and Lashley could leave, along with Kenny King, Austin Aries challenged him to a three on three tag team match, but before letting them leave, Bully Ray sent a 
not so gentle reminder of what is going to happen eventually to all five of them by putting Rockstar Spud through a tape. Looks like Bully Ray's on a mission in TNA. Quite frankly, I can't wait to see him done it. He's already done one. Model of that is one down, five to go. Mind you, I didn't know we, I didn't know the reason why he wanted to put Rockstar Spud through a table. I mean, he already did that at TNA headquarters. Be that as it may. <sighs> MVP Bobby Lashley and Kenny King versus the Wolves and Austin Aries straight out of the break and three on three match with the Wolves and Austin Aries taking on MVP and Kenny King and Bobby Lashley is well underway. Carnage remained outside of the ring for some time before Lashley and Aries brought things back into the ring where Aries was overwhelmed by the sheer size and power of Bobby Lashley. For some time MVP Lashley and King kept the upper hand but it wasn't long before Ares and the Wolves, the three men over the top rope and followed it up with three high risk jumps out of the ring. Finally things were brought back into the ring and the match was officially started. Team MVP maintained the upper hand and worked on breaking down the already injured Eddie Edwards. Finally Edwards managed to muster the energy to tag in Austin Ares who went to work. At this point, Favour went back to Ares and the Wolves, but MVP was able to get the knockout kick on Davy Richards to get the pin 1-2-3 for the win. Winners were MVP, Bobby Lashley and Kenny King. Good six-man tag, if you ask me. Dixie came out to the impact zone to address MVP with what may assume to be an offer of some sort. Dixie called the man out himself to finish what they started last week. MVP wouldn't have it though as he made it clear that he was in charge and he commands respect unlike Miss Carter so there is no way she could help him. She presented two options which was to either go home or confront the board of directors about him. MVP countered by talking about all the money he has at his disposal to help him and that they both know that money is power and that if they wanted to get into the game of chicken then let the games begin. Before things could escalate Bully Ray and Eric Young came out to make good on Bully Ray's threat to put them through a table. Though MVP started that though MVP stated that Eric doesn't have the heart to beat him, Eric wouldn't have this and attempted to jump at him but was stopped by Bully Ray. MVP made it clear that he wasn't scared of them at all and accused Bully of just having a big mouth to which Eric had to stop him from attacking MVP as well. MVP took, it apart, took the opportunity to use his power to create a match between Bully Ray and Eric Young with EC3 as the referee. Bully refused, said he'd rather be fired than face his best friend. Dixie called them out on backing down but Bully countered and stated that he guaranteed every single one of them will be going through a tape. It's main event time. To kick off the main event, Christy Hemi began to announce, however, Kenny King came to the ring and kicked her out and continued him as usual to introduce the competitors but in less than stellar fashion this caused the competitors to chase Kenny King out the ring well around the ring or even though he was just doing his job next up special referee Ethan Carter III made his way to the ring but things didn't stop there when the special enforcer was introduced the living tank himself Bobby Lashley came to the ring to fill the duties but that's not all kind produced into introduce the special King produced to introduce the special tank Timekeeper, MVP. Things could get interesting. Finally, the match started, however, Ethan Carter III was afraid to get in the ring, most likely because he doesn't want to put to be put through a table. Finally, Ethan Carter III made his way into the ring, and after a brief discussion, a brief distraction rather, Young and Bully Ray locked up and things were on the move. It didn't last long, as King interfered in the match by hitting Bully Ray. Things got back underway for a while. However, once Young exited the ring, this time MVP took out Young from behind. After more time, the match continued. Control swing back and forth, but right 
before Bully Ray went to use his elbows on Young, EC3 stopped him which angered Bully and as a consequence he took out the guest referee. King MVP Lashley took this opportunity to enter the ring and beat down on and put a beat down on on Bully Ray and Eric Young. To everybody's surprise though, MVP has big problems. That's right, Samoa Joe returned and apparently he is looking for MVP. Came in, cleared out the ring of Lashley, MVP and King. Kenny King proceeded to hit Kenny King with the muscle buster and then stared down MVP as if to say I'm coming for you. Looks like he's on MVP's list. Either that or MVP is on Samoa Joe's most wanted list. Looks like Samoa, looks like Samoa Joe's not the, well looks like Eric Young and Bully Ray are not the only issues and the only problems MVP has. On to the Smackdown main points. Smackdown kicked off this week with The Shield. After feeling the wrath of Evolution and the Raw contract signing gone south, an extremely focused and intense Shield emerged, wondering just how crazy their payback opponents are willing to get when two of the greatest factions in WWE history go head to head in a no holds barred elimination match this Sunday at the Payback pay per view. Right. While many scenarios are possible in such an unpredictable free-for-all, the Hounds of Justice made it made one thing perfectly clear. At payback, the end of evolution will be a theorize. And evolution will no more be wanted in WWE. Guess we'll have to wait and see. At payback, the United States champion will defend his title against Cesaro. And the Intercontinental champion, Bad News Bear, will defend against Rob Van Dam. But they put their titles on the line at the pay-per-view. The two champions went head-to-head -head on SmackDown. While Paul Heyman in returning to SmackDown announced team not wanting to miss a chance to profess the attributes of his own superstar Cesaro, Sheamus overcame a his fellow persona of gold with a furious bro kick. The Celtic warrior climbed out of the ring and sent a message of his own to the King of Swing by intimidating the outspoken advocate and big mouth Paul Heyman. Bray Wyatt versus Jimmy Uso in the last man standing match. Two days before facing his nemesis John Cena in a last man standing match, Bray Wyatt decided to take on one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions in the same fashion. Though Jimmy Uso took him to hell and back when the battling Samoan missed the etter of words and inadvertently collided with the sting steel ring steps, Bray Wyatt finished off the high flyer by delivering Sister Abigail onto the ringside floor. One thing you need to know about that is Bray Wyatt, Jimmy Uso is no John Cena. And that is the end of the SmackDown and Raw and TNA main points. Now, now, I'll be back after this, ladies and gentlemen. It's a quick promo with some thoughts, some shoots, and maybe a shout out or two. So, stay tuned. Download the Wrestling Matters podcast now on Podomatic.com and iTunes for free. Right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, two things now I want to mention. Uh, if you're a TNA fan and if you're a Ring of Honor fan, first of all, I'll go with Ring of Honor. June 22nd at Best of the World, uh, which will be on pay-per-view, probably in America. June 22nd, Best of the World, what are called returning? Christopher Daniels returns to Ring of Honor. He said, if you watch it, we go on to uh, Ring of Honor's uh, YouTube page, because apparently he says he's not coming alone. I'm a little curious who who is he coming with? Uh, looks like it's a male, of course. But who's he bringing? You know, is he bringing a bodyguard? Is it a henchman? Is it a stooge? I mean, what is he bringing? Because we'll have to find out June 22nd. But Ring of Honor, Best in the World, June 22nd, pay-per-view, Christopher Daniels. Hopefully the Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels. And I think it is the Fallen Angel, uh, Christopher Daniels. Not the one you saw in TNA who was dancing well with Kazarian. Uh, with bad influence. Uh, Fallen Angel, Christopher Daniels, returns to Ring of Honor, June 22nd. And not only that, I'm pretty sure the Marilyn Manson song 
Tone will also be returning to Ring of Honor as well, the uh, disposable teens that he used as his, as his entrance theme. Uh, second point I want to make was uh, the great Muta returns to TNA as well, and I believe it's at Slammiversary. He came at lockdown, tore the house down in the uh, cage, and apparently he's returning again at uh, TNA at lockdown. Uh, not at lockdown, uh, at Slammiversary pay-per-view, so that should be good. I would imagine that he'll have something to do with the X Division or, or that, and if you haven't seen who, if you don't know who great Muta is, I suggest you look him up on YouTube. Uh, he's entirely different to what he used to be now. He's a motor and he's got a different, uh, I think he wears a mask now. He looks like, seriously, he looks like something out of Mortal Kombat. I mean, back in the day, he used to just have the uh, the dark hair and the face paint and, and that. And now he just looks like something out of, you know, that's been brought out of a Mortal Kombat video game. But other than that, he's a legend and uh, you'll be coming to TNA at Slammiversary again. So be sure to check out for that. Slammiversary is not long, quite frankly. And it's uh, TNA's major anniversary pay-per-view. Uh, also, I want to mention, if you're in the Millersbury area, uh, or if you can get to the Millersbury area, whatever, EPW just announced that they'll be returning to the Colby New and Rainbow Leisure Centre in Millersbury on September 20th. Now, I've got word about that. I don't know who's going to be there. Uh, I don't know who's going to, you know, be on the card. I will let you guys know that in future podcasts as well. Um, for all that, I, all I know is they were there April 19th, and it was a great show. I would imagine this one will be a great show as well. September 20th at the Rainbow Leisure Centre in Colby New in Middlesbrough. So get yourself down there if you can, if you're in the Middlesbrough area, or you can get to the Middlesbrough area for that day as well. Uh, for information, go to epwwrestling.co.uk, or if you want, go to the uh, Rainbow Leisure Centre's website. I'm pretty sure they'll have some information on there as well regarding it in due course as well. But for, for main information, go for main information, go to epwwrestling.co.uk at EPW Wrestling on Twitter, follow them. And for more, also for more information as well, go to EPW American Wrestling on face, Facebook.com forward slash EPW American Wrestling. And be sure to like page also. Uh, with that being said as well, I'd like to give a shout out to at the at the M Cook on Twitter and at Axel Mulligan and at James Powers33 as well for uh, helping me out during the week with a, uh, a prediction show on YouTube, which you can see on AJW Wrestling Matters YouTube page, my YouTube page, uh, youtube.com forward slash AJW Wrestling Matters. I did a prediction show and the guys helped me out on that and I'm very, very appreciative on that. And uh, make sure you check out uh, James's Wrestling Rambles as well on YouTube. James Rambles on Twitter as well. Make- All the links will be in the description. Axel's analysis as well. Check that out. Axel Mulligan's uh, show. He covers NXT, which is hopefully I'll be looking to do in a couple of, in the future as well. We'll guy in the podcast. I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but make sure you check that out. It's a good show. Um, yeah, and he's, he does a good job and me like I said, give it a check out as well. All the all the links, all the information will be in the description if you see this on YouTube and on Podomatic as well, so make sure you check that out. And at Tim Vicious as well, Vicious Rants, check out Tim's uh, YouTube page as well, at Tim Vicious on Twitter. And uh, Vicious Rants show as well, that's a pretty good show. I don't agree with most of what he says on the show, but, you know, it, it, it is a good show and he has entitled to his opinions and... And he, does a, and he does a very good job at what he does as well, so make sure you check that out. And like I say, at Tim Vicious on Twitter, make sure you give him a follow as well and check that out and show some love. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, quick shout out to uh, following as well, uh, Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. Apparently they've just released a new show, which I got word about. Uh, I believe it's called Retro Roundtable or something, but they've, it's, they've got their own. Besides the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast, they've got a new show as well. That will be in the description as well. The links will be in the description to talk about all the old school wrestling back in the 90s as well I think this one's about the Royal Rumble 1991 so make sure you check out and give that a listen as well follow them on Facebook uh, follow them on Twitter as well uh, at Sunday Segway you know follow them on YouTube as well the link will be in the description and make sure you check them out on Podomatic as well download it and you know show them some love because they do a good job Kenny Killer and Sugar Shugs the Gal Dim Sugar Shugs as well so make sure you check that out and guys listen out as well because I'll be knocking on your door soon because I want you to be I want you to come on the show on the Wrestling Madness Podcast because the Wrestling Madness Podcast before long we'll be expanding a little bit you know bringing guests on like I promised I'm going to bring the best guests on that I can and we're going to have some fun and uh, have a laugh and enjoy ourselves as what we wrestling fans very much like to do because everybody has an opinion about wrestling everybody has an opinion about what they see on TV today and we always have some fun with it and we always have a good banter about it and that's why I get when I'm on the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast so I look to bring some of that over to the Wrestling Matters Podcast as well so like I say all that will come in due time and with that being said ladies and gentlemen make sure you 
check like I say go to my YouTube page AJW Wrestling Matters give it a like give it a sub like the videos help me out on that one guys please um, and follow me at Tony underscore Walker link will be in the description at WM Podcast on Twitter at uh, Facebook.com forward slash WM Podcast as well give that page a like and until next time episode 10 I will see you when I see you guys my name is Anthony Walker until next time goodbye well enough is enough and it's time for a change Are you ready? It is Sunday, and you're listening to the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast. And give me a hell yeah! And get some mad! Oh yeah! With Kenny Killer. Hey yo! We're in the big D today, baby! And we are live! Woo! I'm the Gaudem Sugar Shoe. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be! Come to the bottom line! Download the Sunday Segway Wrestling Podcast now at iTunes.